But essentially what that's saying is um, when we practice poses called in modified inverted poses or supported inverted poses, it switches the body into relaxation mode. And they are things like, we'll do a few of them in class today, but they are things like this where my head is lower than my heart. So that's one example of a supported inversion pose. We'll do others, downward dog on the floor is one of them. We will do that today. I hope everybody's still hearing me. And with all that, let's come back to sit and relax, not worry about inversions, not worry about volume, not worry about anything else except not worrying at all, just being in the present moment, sitting tall, accepting support of your chair, finding stillness in the body, and focusing on your breath. If you prefer here to focus on a mantra, we did um, talk about those one week, feel free to focus on a mantra instead if that brings your mind to greater clarity. Please draw your hands together at your heart center. Gently press thumbs in and up to create more length. And as always, I will begin with three ohms. Please join me. Inhaling. And on the exhale. Oh. Oh. Another nice full breath in, exhaling, release your hands to your lap, float eyelids open and come forward towards the front of your chair, sitting up nice and tall, finding your seated mountain. So your knees are over your ankles and importantly, your shoulders are over your hips. So for many of us, that means drawing the shoulders a little bit back in space. Draw your hands together at your heart center, please. And waiting for the inhalation to begin, join that with movement, lifting the arms up overhead. And as you exhale, releasing the arms down alongside the body, you can see that I'm already adding my head, neck, and gaze. Feel free to do that or keep your head in neutral. Here's the inhalation. And the exhalation. Let's add the little lift of the heels now as we inhale. Keep heels elevated as you press hands back to the heart center. Keep them elevated still, lift arms. And now finally releasing the heels back down, bringing the arms down and just bringing the head back to neutral. We're gonna take some nice, easy shoulder rolls. We will be doing one um, fairly strong shoulder warm up before we come forward. So I invite you to simply roll your shoulders up, forward, down, and back a few times. And then reverse that work. Nice and easy. Fluidly warming up the shoulder joints. And coming to stillness, we will need our belts. So I hope you do have uh, a belt, either a yoga strap or a bathrobe belt or um, a pants belt available. 
And if you don't have it, no worries, you don't absolutely need it. You're going to bring that strap right over your left shoulder. So not right on the joint, but right in this little curve between your neck and the joint. Lift the arm up. So this is your left arm. Bend the elbow. Place opposite hand on top of the elbow and draw that elbow in towards the midline. So already you're probably feeling a pretty distinct stretch in your triceps muscle, in the upper arm. Just breathe into this for a few moments. You can either remain here, especially if you don't have the belt available, or if you have the strap, you can release, I'll turn to the back so you can see, you can release your hand to the strap and take opposite arm down, reach up until you can take hold of the strap somewhere. So especially if you have any kind of shoulder issues, your hands might be fairly far apart. If available, you can stretch the hands so they're closer together and that top elbow lifts bottom elbow descends. Pull the strap apart if you're using it. And remember the other option is to simply remain with hand on top of elbow point. So be in your pose for a few more breaths. And stretch the arms out long. Release hands to your lap for a moment. Notice how the shoulders are feeling. And switch the position of your strap over to the other side. Now lifting your right arm up and bending into the elbow, placing opposite hand to top elbow point, draw in. And with that right hand that's down somewhere near your shoulder blade, take hold of the strap. Opposite arm comes out, thumb points down, and sweep that hand back behind you, taking hold of the strap somewhere. Probably noticing that it's fairly different on this side. You might be closer, you might be farther apart with your hands. Lift top elbow point, lower the bottom elbow point. Pull the strap apart. As best you can, keep your head evenly balanced. So sometimes in this pose, I notice that heads are tilting. If you can, keep that head evenly balanced between the two shoulders. Inhale and exhale, release. Bring the hands to the thighs. Put your strap aside for now. We may use it very much at the end of class, but not for a little while. So bring your feet back a little bit closer to the rungs of the chair we're going to transition um, up to stand. So tilting yourself forward, finding your hips crease. Inhale, exhale, use momentum, come all the way up to stand and release. Bring the arms down alongside the body. And yes, most of us, once we come to stand, we need to make little adjustments, maybe the shirt, maybe the hair, maybe you need to wiggle your fingers or your shoulders out a little bit and stand up tall, find stillness for mountain pose. And releasing from mountain pose, we're going to bring mountain pose back behind our chair, which we will turn so the seat is forward. Come to stand in mountain pose. We'll come into a flowing sequence. 
the, at least the beginning of this is very familiar, I think, to everyone. Inhale, lift the arms up overhead. Exhaling, bend the knees. Sit back as if in a chair. Straighten the legs, lengthen the spine. And bending knees again on the exhale. Inhale, flow all the way up. Exhale, and start. Let's do that one more time and then we'll add on. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling now. And exhaling. Inhale again. And hands to heart. Standing tall, adding on now, inhaling, exhaling. I think everyone's done our version of chair, downward facing dog. So we're placing hands on the top of the chair, stepping our feet back about a leg's distance from the chair and find your chair dog. Arms are long, pressing down into the top of the chair back. A few breaths here. You can absolutely bend your knees if that feels better for you. Or feel free to work with lengthened legs. Please bend your knees and step one foot and the other forward. We're coming back to chair pose. Finishing the sequence by lifting. And exhaling, hands to heart. Inhaling, lift. Exhaling, chair pose. Stepping back into the dog. Just one nice full breath here. And then step the left foot forward. Find a lunge, knee over ankle in the forward leg, back leg is straight, and lift one arm up. Exhale, release it. Step the back foot forward, and step opposite foot back. So now your right foot is forward and you're in a lunge on the other leg. Inhaling, lift. Exhaling, release. Bring that back foot forward, chair pose again. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hand start. We're going to add one more pose onto that little flow, but I'd like to um, walk you through it first. So everyone has done dog. Let's all come into dog. And from dog, you're going to come into a chair version of plank, bringing your hips forward. It's just like you tilted mountain pose forward a little bit at an angle. So you can see, I think my shoulders are more or less in line with my hips and my knees and my ankles. It's not droopy, it's not rounded, it's long and hinge back for dog. And come forward to plank. If anyone has problems with wrists or this simply feels like too strong a pose for you, you can do the same thing at the wall. So that's the sequence. We're going to fold that into our flow. Come to stand. Just be in mountain pose for a breath or two. No need to anticipate. Hands to heart. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, find chair pose. Inhale here. Bring your left foot back into a lunge. I'll give you the option here of lifting either one arm or both. 
and holding for a moment in a balance lunge. One hand lifted or both. Release both hands down to the chair, back foot forward, switch sides. One arm lifts, or perhaps both for a brief balance and a high lunge. Releasing down, now stepping that front foot back. Here we go, finding our dog. And you can either stay here or come to the wall if you like doing plank at the wall better. And move your hips forward. Chair version of plank. Hips back. We'll do that one more time. Chair version of plank. And dog, bend your knees, step one foot and the other forward. Inhale, come all the way up to stand and exhale, hands to the heart. Pause for a moment in this heart-centered version of mountain pose. Notice if your shoulders have started to hike up towards your ears, encourage them to relax. And even though the shoulders are releasing, the heart is lifting a bit into the thumbs. And release, bring the arms back down. I think we'll do that whole sequence one more time. And we'll take a longer balance in our lunges, inhale, lift up, exhale, release, inhale, lengthen, opposite foot, let's step the right foot back this time first, lifting one arm, maybe both arms, pause. And release, bring the arms down, step one foot forward, the other foot back. Here we are on the other side, lifting one arm, maybe both arms for the balance. Releasing hands down. Now the front foot steps back, find your dog. Inhale, bring the hips forward, find chair plank, hips back, bend knees, step one foot in the other forward. Here we are in our nice familiar chair pose. And inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, hands to heart. And pause here with hands at heart in mountain pose. We're take um, another standing sequence. So this time your hip is facing the back of your chair rather than both hips facing. So just one hip facing, you'll step your left foot forward, opposite foot back. Both legs are straight. This is preparing for triangle pose. Please place your hands on your hips. Extend the left arm forward with the palm facing up. We're going to slide the fingertips and the entire side body towards the chair and back up. Slide it out. I think I've mentioned in some of my classes that I had a teacher who called this pizza in the oven pose. So it's imagining that you've got a pizza on your palm and you're sliding it into the cold fired oven. That won't feel too good. One more time, 
sliding out, releasing that hand down to the inside of the leg, or you can certainly rest it on the chair. Lifting opposite arm for triangle pose. In triangle pose, your head can continue to be in neutral. Or if you're comfortable doing so, you can gaze up towards that lifted hand. That's more of the quote unquote traditional triangle pose. And come all the way back up. <sighs> Placing hands on hips. And we're going to take that into a little bit of a twisted pose. So now the hips are going to face the chair again and the back toes turn in more. So that enables you to face the chair. Legs stay straight. Please bring your right arm down onto the top of the chair, forearm to the back of the chair. You can see my spine is still lengthening. Place opposite hand on hip and twist open, drawing your shoulder and your elbow back. You can also extend that back arm and just be in your pose for a few breaths. I'm going to take a look if I can see any of you. Pausing for a few moments in your twisted position. Yes, nice. Unwind. Come forward again. Straighten yourself back up to an upright position. And we'll take that to the other side. So now your right leg is forward and your opposite foot steps back, toes a little bit more forward. Oh, sorry, triangle pose first. So um, your, yes, we are switching. So that foot is back, and now it's parallel to the back edge of the mat. Hands are on hips, second side. Extend now your right arm long, pizza in the oven pose. This is an exhale. Inhale here. Exhaling. And inhaling. Last time, exhaling, find that side body extension and then bring the hand down to the inside of the leg or maybe to your chair. Choose what's right for you. Extend the opposite arm up towards the sky, head in neutral or gazing up. Inhale, bring yourself all the way back up. And now we're doing the second variation, which is a little twist. So back toes now turn in a little bit more so your hips can face towards the chair. Legs remain straight, hinging from the hips. Come on, forearm to chair, opposite hand to hip, and twist open. Extending the arm if you choose to, that can bring you into the twist a little more deeply. And unwind, come back up, step yourself forward, find mountain pose again, standing tall. So it's always nice to be in mountain pose, especially before we begin a balancing sequence. So that's what's coming next. And I always start on this side. We'll start on the other side today. So come to the right side of your chair. Finding your mountain pose. We'll start with a very grounded version of the sequence. So 
the outside foot, your right foot comes forward, hand or hand to the heart center. The knee is a little bit bent. From that position, extend the leg long, reach the arms overhead. So this is very grounded. The foot is on the floor, the leg is long, the arms are long. Come back to the bent position, knee bends, hands to heart. And bring, I'll turn to the side so you can see, bring that leg back behind you, foot on the floor, knee is bent. And then extend the leg long, it's still on the floor. Lift arms or use one hand on the chair. Take a brief hold here. And come back to neutral. Hands to heart. So I'll remain um, turned to the side. I think it's easier to see the pose this way. You can certainly still have the chair available. So this is a little variation. We started off grounded. Now we're going to lift. Lifting the foot off the floor. Arms. Overhead, extend the leg long. And of course, you can always hold your chair. Bending knee, bringing that foot back behind you. And here's the lengthening of the leg, the lift of the arm, maybe both arms. And maybe that foot comes to the floor. You choose. Release, bring it all back down. Standing tall. And now, second side. So coming over to stand on the left side of your chair. Take a moment of stability. Outside leg is our working leg. So outside leg comes forward, little bend in the knee. Extend the leg long. One arm lifts, maybe the other arm as well. Pause. Bend. Bring that foot back behind you and then extend it, lengthen that back leg. Lift one arm, maybe lift both arms. And that back leg doesn't have to be stick straight. It can be a little soft bend in the knee. That might be kinder to low backs. And release. Standing tall in mountain pose, and we'll take our last variation, which is with the lift. And you can either lift or keep the foot on the ground. Bringing that foot forward. This is crane pose. Extend leg long, lift one arm, maybe lift the other arm. And coming back to the bent shape, transition so the foot is back behind you. Lengthen that leg, foot up off the floor or touch it down. Um, one arm lifts, maybe joined by the other arm or hold the chair. and release, come down, stand tall. So anytime we transition between poses like that in our balancing, it's very good. Might not always feel so good, it can be challenging, but it's a very good way for the body to learn balance. We're gonna come down to hands. Oh, we have to do our supported inversion. I forgot that, very important. 
part of our theme, and this should feel good after that very strong active sequence. So you're going to bring your blanket to your chair seat, or maybe you don't need it. Taller people, I would recommend doing this on the back of the chair because we do want our head to be lower than our heart. So we're gonna hinge forward from the hips crease. You can see that right about now, my head is going lower than my heart. And I'm resting my forehead on my folded arms. Be here, and again, as I mentioned, taller people can do the exact same thing on the back of the chair. You can see that my head, because of my height, doesn't go down below my heart. But if you're taller than me, this might be the best position for you. We don't want to be uncomfortable. That's really important in these poses. Because ideally, we hold the pose for quite a few breaths to get those baroreceptors to work. I'm going to take a look. We'll just be here for another few breaths. The beautiful thing about these supported inversions is that they work even if your mind is scattered and unfocused. It's not like meditation where you have to really work on focusing the mind. With our supported inversions, the body, the baroreceptors do the work. Nice, I can see some of you, that looks great. And slowly, especially if you have low blood pressure, making your way back up to upright. And then we will come down to hands and knees. So always an option for people who don't like to come to their knees. Uh, to remain standing. So if you're remaining standing, you'll be here. This is your version of hands and knees. Or you're coming down actually to hands and knees. Have your chair available. And I did notice that um, the time, <laughs> time is moving ahead rapidly. Um, I think I'm going to go a little bit over beyond 11 o'clock because we took quite a bit of time at the beginning with those volume adjustments. So I hope that's okay with everyone. It's coming down to hands and knees, hands under shoulders, hips over knees. And you're not sagging. You're coming to a lengthened spine, a little bit of tone in the abdomen. Please stretch the left leg back behind you and roll back and forth a few times. Come to stability and lift the leg up off the earth. Simply replace the knee back down to the ground. Same thing on the other side. Pressing back and forward a few times. And then simply lifting the leg up off the earth, not too high. Then the knee, bring it back down. We're going to transition from side to side. Extend the first side leg, your left leg out long. Bend the knee, extend it long. Return it to the earth. Second side, length. Bend, extend, release. We're going to go back and forth. This is good for agility. And then finally, I'll suggest or um, ask you to experiment with lifting opposite arm. So going back and forth a few times. Extend leg long, lift leg, maybe lift opposite arm, and release. Second side, leg long, lift, opposite arm as well, or not, and release. We'll go back and forth two more times. Lengthen, lift, release. Lengthen, 
lift, release. Last time, long leg, add arm, release. Long leg, lift arm, release. And now, of course, for a hold, first side, leg back, opposite arm lifts, pause here. You can certainly keep both palms grounded. And I know some of you like to keep forearms on the chair instead. Coming into fists can also give you a little relief if you have wrist issues. And release that leg. Second side, lengthen. Lift, add your arm variation or not. And release. Ah, sitting back on your heels if that's comfortable for you. Not everyone's knees find that to be a friendly position. So you can also stand on your shins. Just taking a few breaths here. Hands at the heart. Close your eyes. Notice what you're feeling. And we're going to come down onto our bellies. Uh, I will demonstrate first. So I'll demonstrate pretty quickly. We won't do it quickly. Come down to your belly in any way that you're comfortable doing so. Forehead on the earth, legs long, arms long. Lift both legs up off the earth, release them. Lift both legs, lift the upper body. You can also choose to lift the arms or keep them grounded for a little more support. Come on back to the earth. I'm just demonstrating now. So last part of this is to lift legs, lift upper body and go wide with the arms and the legs like a starfish. Close it up, go wide, close it up, release. So I did that very quickly. And that is not the pace we'll be using, but please come on down to your belly. Take your time getting there. And for this one, we're bringing our forehead right away down onto the earth, arms alongside the body. And just pause for a moment. Situate yourself so you feel both hips grounding down into the earth equally. Lengthen the legs. Toes are directly back behind you. Lift both legs just an inch or two up off the floor. And release them down. Lift both legs, lift the upper body. Pause here for a breath. And release down. For our last variation, lift legs, lift upper body, perhaps lifting arms as well. And go wide into starfish pose. Come on back, arms alongside, legs towards each other. Go wide into starfish. Upper body is still lifted. Coming back towards each other. Going wide into starfish. Ah, last exhalation for this sequence. Exhale, release. Fold your arms on top of each other. Take a rest with your forehead on the forearm. Breathe. Remember the breath is one of our stress management tools. Always helpful to come back to focus on the breath.
noticing that gentle expansion, especially of the back body as you inhale. Ah, and that release as you exhale. Inhaling, expand the back body. Feel the rib cage grow wider. Exhaling. Soften, find more ease. One more time, your breath, your way. And we're gonna do that one more time. So we won't do the whole sequence. We're going to actually hold the starfish part of the pose this time. So bringing your arms alongside your body, lift both legs up off the earth, lift your upper body up off the earth as well. Maybe you'll feel your shoulders lift away from the floor. Go wide into starfish. Bring legs and arms back towards midline. Go wide into starfish. Arms and legs towards one another. Go wide, this time we're holding the starfish part of the pose. Arms in a T, legs wide, upper body lifted. Of course, this is a very strong pose. Feel free to come down at any time. And everyone, please do come back to midline. This time, folding opposite arm on top. We always have one arm that wants to come on top. Do the other. And then rest your forehead. Let your legs relax. It might feel good to swivel your hips back and forth a little bit. And coming to stillness of the body, focusing on your breath. We are going to transition to hands and knees again. One more active inverted, supported inversion, and this is downward dog. So bring your hands a little bit forward of your shoulders. You're on hands and knees. If anyone would prefer to come back to stand and do a standing dog, please take the time to transition back to standing. Otherwise, for those of us doing the hands and knees version of dog, we're tucking the toes, we're gathering the breath in, and then on the exhalation, lifting the hips up and back, pressing hands firmly into the earth, spine lengthens, knees remain bent. Right away, gently land, Back on hands and knees, table pose. We'll do that two more times with the breath, and then I'll invite you to hold if you would like to. Exhaling, hips back, chest pressing towards thighs. Come on back, landing gently, hands and knees. And for this last time, I'll invite you to hold briefly if you'd like to. Exhaling, bent knees or straight legs. And just a few breaths there if it feels okay for your body. And we know that in Downward Facing Dog, our heart is higher than our head. That makes it an inversion and that triggers those baroreceptors. If you haven't already, please do come down to hands and knees gently uh, and take your time to come onto your back body. So you're going to come all the way down onto your back.
and you will need to have your strap available. Sorry, I didn't mention that. I hope you all have it within reach. Come on down to your back. Bend your knees, please. And as you know, I don't demonstrate on poses when we're lying down, but I will do it standing up. Pretty much the same thing. You're going to, I think this is very familiar to most of you. You're going to take your strap, interlace it around the ball mounds of your left foot. Gently extend that leg so the sole of the foot is towards the sky. Just enjoying that stretch in the back of the leg. We're not going too far here. I'll give you an opportunity for a deeper stretch, but let's start in a nicely anchored position. That foot is directly towards the sky and the leg is at 90 degrees, no more. So we're not drawing it in. 90 degrees or a right angle, however you want to think about it. Or if you are a little tighter in the legs, you can bring it more forward towards the floor. A few breaths here, enjoying your stretch. Bring both sides of the strap now into your left hand. Bring that leg out to the side. Opposite arm out in a T position. Some of you I know are quite flexible. Try to avoid having that leg that you're extending come all the way to the floor. Exercising a little bit of strength as well as flexibility. Inhaling, bring the leg all the way back up. And now is your opportunity to draw the leg in a little bit closer to the torso for those of you who have that length in the back of the leg. So a little bit beyond 90 degrees, if that's available to you, coming into a slightly deeper stretch. Your elbows might bend a little bit. And that opposite leg, I see different things going on, which is Perfect, the opposite leg can either be extended long or keep it bent. And slowly bend the knee, take the strap off the foot, bend both legs, soles of both feet, even. Just pause for a moment, find evenness and balance. And second side. And so now looping the belt around the ball mounds of the right foot. Or whatever is your second side. Extending the leg long, just coming to 90 degrees or less. So it's not a super big stretch. It's just anchored and balanced. Very good for the low back to be in this position. Transferring both sides of the strap now into your right hand. Let the leg come out to the right. Opposite arm extends into a T. Breathe into the stretch. If you want more sensation, rather than letting the leg go closer to the floor, think about drawing the leg closer to your shoulder. So up rather than down, if that makes sense. Bringing that leg back to a more centered position, here's your opportunity. Again, to draw that leg perhaps a little bit closer to the torso. Bigger stretch if you choose to experience that. Coming back to 90 degrees, bend the knee, unloop the strap from your foot. 
And we're going to end with happy baby. Um, if you're, I think many of you know what that is. If you're not familiar with it, I'll try to demonstrate from the chair. And I'll also talk you through it. So picking both feet up off the earth. Reach down and hold on behind your thighs. Let's all start with that. So you're holding on behind your thighs and your knees are still bent. Let your knees go quite wide, as wide as your armpits. Soles of the feet are up towards the sky. Some of you may be able to reach down and take hold of your calves or maybe even the bottoms of your feet. And you're in happy baby. Pressing down wherever you're holding into the tops of the feet, into the backs of the thighs, maybe the ankles. Oh, yes, that's nice. I see some swaying going on. That can feel really lovely. Swaying back and forth. Knees are wide here. Nice, everyone. Just a few more breaths in. Happy baby. Very good pose to loosen up our hip joints. Coming back to stillness, draw the knees together. Draw the ankles together, land the feet again. And for our very last inversion pose, to get those bare receptors going, we, I'm going to suggest for relaxation that you use a chair and a folded blanket. So take a moment to have those two things available, your chair, a folded blanket, or bath towel. You can take that folded blanket, the seat of your chair, first of all, is going to be facing you. You're going to take your folded blanket, place it down on the ground at the chair legs. You can sit down. I'm only going to demonstrate part of this. You can sit down to the side and then you'll swing your legs up onto the chair and hook them under the chair back. And I'm not gonna lie back, but the idea is to then bring yourself to lie back on the floor with your legs supported on the chair. Your hips are a little bit elevated by the blanket. That's what makes it an inversion. So even just this little bit of thickness is bringing you into a, a supported inversion pose. I will caution that you have, um, if you have uncontrolled high blood pressure, uncontrolled high blood pressure, so if you're not being controlled by medication, or if you have glaucoma, any um, detached retinas, anything like that, you should not stay in this pose. So um, feel free to do the pose instead without the blanket. That should be fine. Settle yourself in. I know some of you are still adjusting. You've got that littlest bit of lift underneath your hips. Your calves are on the chair seat. And let's make sure that front edge of the chair seat is right up in the fold behind your knees. And I'm not even going to talk anymore. I'm just going to let, we're all going to let the pose do its work. That's the beauty of the pose. You don't have to do any meditation or focused breathing. Let the pose work its own magic. Let your palms rest wherever they're comfortable. That might be on your belly or alongside the body. Close your eyes. Simply let the pose do its work.
Please allow your breathing now to begin to grow just slightly deeper, finding those full but unforced inhalations and easeful exhalations. Bring a little movement into your feet and your hands. Fingers and toes might wiggle a bit. And very carefully, because most of you do have your calves up on a chair, sequencing over to roll onto your side body, feet, calves come off the chair. Rest here for a moment on your side body. Head is supported by your arm or maybe by the blanket. Knees drawn in towards chest in embryo position. It's the pose of new beginnings. The metaphor being that every time we practice yoga, it's an opportunity for a new beginning. Pressing both palms now down into the earth, bring yourself carefully back up to upright, sitting up on a little bit of height right under your hips. Find a length in your spine. Bring your hands together at your heart, gently pressing in and finding that little lift. I will close by chanting Om once. I hope you'll join me breathing in. Oh. One more big, expansive breath, expanding with the peace and ease of yoga. Exhaling, namaste. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to come unmute in case anyone has any questions or comments? Thank you. Great weekend. Oh, thank you. Thank you. you have a good weekend. Thank you, Jean. Jean, too many voices. Too many voices. One one person raised a hand who would like to speak. Arlene. <laughs> when you started doing the chair in the beginning, the volume came on so loud it like corrected itself. When we were bending by the chair, you know, in the beginning, when you got us up and we were doing chair pose holding on the chair, the volume just went so loud and perfect. I wonder what happened at that point. Did anyone else experience that? No, I don't know. You adjusted your microphone. Well, once you adjusted it, it was great. It yeah. was great. Oh, good. I'm it glad it worked very well. Really enjoyed today. Really enjoyed today's. Uh, Great, thank you, Marcia. Any, anyone else with questions?